brothers and sisters, welcome to day 11 of our 33-day journey to Eucharistic glory. And today, we are going to be musing on the great Saint Maximilian Kolbe, the great Polish saint and martyr for our Catholic faith. And today's theme is no love without sacrifice. You know, one of the great fruits of Holy Communion, of this bread of life, is that when we receive the Holy Eucharist or we go to an adoration chapel or we sit before the tabernacle and we, we really pray before the bread of life, Jesus is active through the Holy Eucharist. And so when we receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, there are many fruits that take place in our soul. But one of the great fruits is that, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, and we'll discuss him in the next day, is that it's a sacrament of charity because when we receive the bread of life, it infuses love into our soul. It infuses power into our soul that can help us live sacrificial lives. So there's no love without sacrifice because, because of the condition that we do live in, it is an inconvenience often to love because we have to put up with you know, the sins of others, the way they afflict us, and yet we're called to love them. Jesus raised the bar. He called us to love even our enemies. You know, how many of us live with resentment, even at our family members, people that we live in our homes, that we might choose to be cold to us, that we would, wouldn't speak to us, maybe in the workplace. You know, our egos get the better at us and that our pride is stung often by the harsh words of others or by the arrogance of others. And so it, these things fester and it can create great rifts and it can create anger and, you know, there's so much love in Trinidad, but as we know, there is violence. There is violence in the homes. There's violence in, in, our, in our neighborhoods. There's gangs, you know, and we need to bring love into these situations. I remember a while back before I entered the order, I was doing a prison ministry with the Living Water community, and I was struck by how much these prisoners felt loved by us strangers coming in there and being with them and teaching them about Jesus. And I remember seeing the impact it had on them. And that, that day I learned a very important lesson about not taking for granted that the love in our lives and not taking for granted how some people are led to a lot of violence and anger and stuff because they've never been shown love. And there's one of the great impetus of our Catholic mission is to, to love. And this is why Catholics and Christians across the world following the gospel have been doing this for centuries by having hospitals, by teaching and educating, by, by you know, having services of all sorts to help the underprivileged and to, and, and to provide the spiritual needs of others. But it takes great sacrifice. In order for our parishes to be built up, it takes sacrifice. Now, St. Maximilian Kolbe, his whole life was sacrificial. You know, during the time of the Nazi invasion into Poland, he put his life at risk. And, and in their monastery with a few others, they turned basically a, a hospital into a monastery. And Matthew Kelly talks about it in the book to, to bring people to, to that place. And, uh, and it was because of the Holy Eucharist. And Matthew Kelly says this, but Maxim, St. Maximilian could be witness to this. It was because of the Holy Eucharist, because of the adoration that happened in that monastery, that they were able to find the love to continue to risk their life, but also to serve the wounded. And you know, in our book, The 33-Day Journey, Book to Eucharistic Glory, St. Maximilian says, Jesus is the first citizen of the, their monastery, the elder brother and bridegroom of souls present in the Eucharist. He makes us brothers. He warms our hearts with mutual, mutual love. There you go. He makes us brothers, makes us brothers and sisters. Jesus gives us the love so that we could look out for each other in society. Another quote that St. Maximilian says is, Jesus, you come to me and unite yourself intimately to me in the form of nourishment. Your blood now runs in mine. Your soul, incarnate God, compenetrates mine, giving courage and support. What miracles! Who would have ever imagined such? 
We know from the life of St. Maximilian and Matthew Kelly pointed out that he goes on to not only risk his life by having this, 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 this hospital, but he risks his life ultimately when he heard a father in, because he ends up in a concentration camp in Auschwitz, and he hears his father crying, not me, not me, and so he offers himself in place of that father. So he's sent off with a group of people, and he's, there's no food and water for two weeks, and then he, he dies. He's the last one alive, but he dies. But it was the Eucharist that gave him that sacrificial love to lay down his life for others. So brothers, the bread of life, the Holy Eucharist that comes from heaven upon the altar in every Mass that, where Jesus re resides in every tabernacle is there to powerfully emit His grace upon us to transform us so that we can go out and transform the world. Brothers and sisters, stay tuned to our journey. God bless you.